You ain't got to snatch me up in here every time. What's the purpose of the tent? Look, man. It's supposed to be private, no bugs in here? Yes, man. Your you phones is I tight. don't want that city pollution messing up my nose, my inhaling of the beautiful air. It's still in there. It's still, this is a tent. Look, whatever. All right, listen. I've been doing some research on YouTube. Haven't you ever been to the library? Who goes to the library in 2017? Where's the library? I don't know any libraries. I know some. Unless it's on a college campus. That's it. My son goes to the library. So. And they don't go to the college library to read books. They go in there to get on the free Wi-Fi. Anyway, yeah, look. Why you got me in there? I've been researched uh -huh. on YouTube. Okay. Do you think the man, white man, dumb down hip hop to mess up the black community? That theory is not too bad. I think maybe, maybe, yeah, probably. There's a few things, man. Like if you you go to hip hop back when it first started, a lot of this fun, dancing, everything like that. You had a lot more female rappers also. There's a lot more female MCs back in the day. Uh -huh. Wasn't selling too much sex. Maybe a song here and there. They were just selling a good time. They were selling a good time, mm -hmm. partying. It was all about partying with hip hop. It was. That's all it was about. Nowadays you got hip hop. There's only one female rapper. Who? Nicki Minaj, she's the biggest female rapper. There's nobody else. She's not the only one. But... What I'm saying is the only one that that's being pushed heavily. Of course, it's not only one. But I'm saying back in the day, you had Queen Latifah, MC Light, Yo, Yo. You had a bunch of different female MCs back in the day that wasn't just selling sex, was selling a good time, bars, lyrics. You had yeah, had bars and lyrics. But they got sexual with Lil Kim, Foxy Brown. They had the cleavage out there. That's when it started to get crazy. Oh, yeah. So when did it kick in? When, when was the shift? I think somewhere in the mid '90s. With who though? Gangster rap too. Gangster rap was part of the. I think to a, I think to a point, like because you got to think and like the Ice Cube NWA or it was they didn't just push gangster rap. They had a message in their stuff. Absolutely. So they gave you a message. Fight the power. You had you know Chuck That's D right. and all them. You had all right. that. So the NWA still had a message even though they had gangster rap. Then they started to push only violence and killing, mm -hmm. and you've seen the murder rate rise in our community. And that's only rappers they wanted to sign after that was to murder rappers. They pushed the beef, the East Coast, West Coast, Biggie and Tupac beef. That was spawned by the media, by the man. We don't own the media. We know who owns the media. It ain't us. Hmm. This might be all right. Because I did notice a shift. Because I, you know, I'm 40. Mm -hmm. so I grew up, you know, everything was pro black for a while. Yeah, right. X Clan, Poor Righteous Teachers. Everything uplifted our community. About Brand new being, they was on some, they was on the extreme side of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like all, all white men are devil. I was like, ah, I never, I never believed in that. But mm -hmm. like, it was super like, you know, let's get educated, let's unite, let's, and then the shift. Cause the crack, the crack hit the streets in the eighties. Right. And that's when, you know, NWA was spawned out of that. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, man. They have these things that they don't know if you heard of it called industry plans. Have you heard of that? Mm -hmm. That some of these rappers are called industry plans. It's these guys that the industry picks out and pretty much says, here, go in there and we're, we're making these guys big. And they call them industry plants because they're selling all these supposed records. Yeah. But when you go to a concert, they ain't, can't even sell out a thousand, two thousand seaters. Ain't nobody there? Ain't nobody there. Ooh, ooh, you got an example? This is a rapper. There's a white rapper named Russ. He's getting called out a lot for being an industry plant right I now. I've never even heard of Russ. Yeah. Anybody I would have heard of? Everybody knows Iggy Azalea. Yeah, but Iggy. she she flamed out though. She she came. But she's she a one album wonder. But she still she still was hot and she still hit. And you know they're saying that a lot, we always say like a lot of times the white rappers are the ones. Now you look at somebody like Eminem who studied and loves hip hop from the ground up. Mm -hmm. You know him being in the Ice uh, Ice T documentary and a lot of people respect his hip hop knowledge. But you got some people that can't name anything that don't know too much about hip hop and they're coming into this culture. And they're kind of just using it and leaving. Even somebody like a Miley Cyrus that jumped in Justin Bieber, they jump into the hip hop culture. Mm -hmm. And when they want to be free, they're like, yo, I don't even mess with that. I don't want to do that. Don't notice me as that anymore. Right. Do you think the industry even planted them to like get with all these rappers, like get produced songs by Mike Will made it and get featured by, you know, the Khaleds and stuff like that. And all of a sudden they make their money. Now get away from you. You already sucked up all the black people. Get up out of there. Get back to your, your culture. 
and beat us free. Like she don't twerk no more. She don't dress provocative no more. Nothing like that. I'm glad though, because it just it was over the top. I mean, she she was built like a pencil, but hey, now she dipped out of our culture and she's she's covering herself up and she's she's on the voice doing this whole different thing. She re she revamped her image. Just, I feel like, but with Miley Cyrus, she didn't need us. Already. She was already big. She then, was, she, then she did all that. I think it was just more. She Miley's was, a tough case because she was so young, and I think she just went through a little rebellious phase within her. Possibly. And like, Yo, possibly. And then, and now she like you people know. People say that about her and Justin Bieber, but I look at know, somebody like Pink, for example. Mm -hmm. When she first came out in heavy R and B. Absolutely. Heavy yep. R and B, mm -hmm. and then she just switched it up, and then just blew up on a different style. Now that could have been that could have been pressure from the record label. Absolutely, they seen the image. Like, they wanted yeah. to work her as maybe the white R and B girl because right. she, she's talented. Pink can sing. Super dope. Yeah, but I'm saying with somebody like Molly Cyrus, you know, she went in, she went in and she used it, sucked it dry, and then she dipped out and doesn't even doesn't even pay no homage to the culture. That's my issue with a lot of time with some of these people is that culture they come, culture. Yeah, they come into the culture and they don't pay and they don't be like, yo, thank y'all for this. They ain't no wearing cornrows, don't ever say it's a thing that they got from the culture or nothing like that. They suck up the culture. R and B right now. R and B is a David Banner said R and B is Adele. R and B is Sam Smith. R and B is Justin Timberlake. I mean, you look at they're the biggest R and B artists out there. There's no big R and B artist besides what right now, Trey Songs right now? He might be the biggest. Chris Brown, maybe? Oh. That's it. That's all. That's all we supposedly got. But they're not selling nowhere near closest records as Adele. Adele. Do you think they're planning some of these white rappers in there right now to take over, and then they're going to be the face of hip hop? Well, I don't. I don't see a lot of white rapper infiltration uh, in hip hop. Mm -hmm. But that R and B thing, that I never thought about that. Right. It, it can like be Apple, a push out just like rock and roll. That's crazy. Apple Music had a, a section called. Uh, I think Blue Eyed Soul. Blue Eyed Soul, yeah, yep. And people were like, "Yo, what the hell is this?" Like, like you know, uh, not Alan Thick, Robin. Thicke, Robin Thick, John Justin, B. J Justin Timberlake, even a little bit of John Mayer in up in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do you? I mean, they they don't they can't do it too fast with hip hop, but definitely there's. I mean, they're slowly doing it. They said that. Before they said that guy Russ. They talk about maybe possibly Post Malone, mm. Iggy Azalea. Iggy, she she ran out of the steam. Hey, man. She's done. She's done. Hey, she's still out here with the ass shots, man. I mean, she out here, but she musically, she not she not relevant no more. Side note, would you smash it to get Zelda? Nah. She's not really my flavor. You wouldn't smash it to get Zelda? I mean, you know, on a cold, cold, hot night. A cold, a cold, <laughs> cold, a cold hot, hot night? <laughs> I mean, you know, she's cute. Like Paul Wall, you, you, you hot like a cup of warm she's, piss? She's cute, though. She's cute. I'll give her that. I just, I never really lusted after her like that. You but hot. on a cold hot. A cold hot night? A cold hot, yeah. She's a little too pasty for me. She got the pasty going. Yeah. She's like a blank canvas. Like mad pasty. Yeah. Like she would scare me in the middle of the night in the dark hallway. Yeah, she definitely looked like Oh, 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 yeah. oh she throws, she throw what He throws some of them old clothes Cause on Cause I'm scared yeah. of clown. Yeah. yeah. So if you're- if You you're, calling her a clown? If your complexion is like- The color of a clown? If it's too pasty. I, I'm gonna get you calling her it at night. You calling her it right not, now, but not in the face, but just the skin tone. I mean, just she kind of she she has that it forehead, bro. You ever see you ever see somebody in the middle of the night in the house, but the moonlight is coming in, so, so it makes your face, you know, brighter. So you calling her the moonlight on the turnaround? No. Just, that would scare the shit out of me in the middle of the night. What do you think about rappers speaking out about, you know, saying like Kara's one has spoken out a numerous times. Mm -hmm. You know, Lord Jamar has spoken out a, a numerous times. Yeah. David Banner has spoken about it. Like a lot of rappers have came out and they, these were rappers that were in there. And even I think David Banner spoke about, they, like even when he tried to change his message to a positive one, they didn't want him to. Yeah. I definitely think they push, they push music that's just fluff. Like we partying, we having a good time, we talking about money, cash, hoes, we pushing. Remember when Jay-Z said he had to dumb down the double his dollars, that's because the, the fluff rap was selling. Right. But you always had the cash that stayed in the lane. And you know, talking about some Talib Kweli common. You but know. do they sell and make money? Who? That's all. Dude, what do you think it's about? Do you think they're dumbing down our community to dumb down our people to so so we can kill each other to higher the murder rate, or do you think it's because of money, or do you think it's a combination of both? I think it's probably a combination and control thing. Like, yeah, we want to control. We want to control the masses. You got more control over the masses if you don't like their message. Like, they probably didn't like the message back in the late '80s. With X Clan, 
stop the violence, self-destruction, all that. Eh, there's mm-hmm. too much unity going on. We got to bust that up. Mm-hmm. And so, I don't know. So now they want just, you know, because if it's just fluff rap, just look at my cars. I got all the bitches. You, you keep having a good time. You're not really coming together as a community. Right. I agree with that. I think they don't want us to come together as a community because they don't let too many rappers through that they're building up themselves. Like somebody like Kendrick Lamar, right, who's a pretty big rapper, and J. Cole. Mm. These guys have built their fan base from the ground up themselves. Right. You know, I was a fan of these guys way beforehand, before they were huge in, in the industry at all. And, and they, they got, sell it. Yeah, but they got a, because they built a loyal fan base. It wasn't because of the industry. Right. It was loyal fan base and consistent music. Mm-hmm. Anybody else that tries to put in music, somebody like, like to me, Nas is you know one of your favorite rappers, right? Right. He should be one of the biggest artists of all time, selling wise. Mm-hmm. But even with the Damian Marley album that he put out, they they had some messages up in that album, and it should have did a lot better. Do you yeah. think when they do you think when an album like that is put out, do you think they hear those lyrics and like, ooh, we're gonna under we're gonna under promote it. We're not gonna put enough units out and all those things like that. We're not gonna push it, we're not gonna put it on no NFL, NBA games, even if they got a hot song in there because we don't want too many people of that community to hear that message. I, I think so. I think they're not really pushing stuff like that with, with those type of messages. Even though that's the type of stuff that resonates with people. You know, I feel like the content, but I feel like the control lies within the artist too. Like they could change the message. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they can start talking about stuff. If everybody's on one accord, not necessarily the same message, but if everybody's like, you do a hot party beat with some conscious, we Bars building the community there, yeah. up. You mm-hmm. throw that in there, and then it could be like, oh man, you know, because Fight the Power was a smash. Yeah. But it, it was the music and, and the content. Had we just need fun. to go back to that. The artists need to do it, and then it's like no choice. But I do feel like they're trying to dumb down the real. But I feel like it can be a resurgence in content and hip hop due to the internet and the independence that brings on. Absolutely. So you got the, the biggest three hip hop acts right now, Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole. Mm-hmm. Out, of the, out of the three of those, two are talking about some real stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's dope. And that one talking about love was love is real, man. But love is real too. No disrespect Drake to talk, love. Drake, but Drake talking about love. Man. Everybody can relate to that. That's why Drake is, he, he might he's the most streamed artist in music history. Period, yeah. right now. So, but yeah, but like, you know, J. Cole and Kendrick talk about some real, you know, American issues. Mm. And so, and it still resonates and it still sells. So it's just, I think people are hungry for that content though. We, we done, we getting done with the, with the cars and the bitches, the drugs and the violence. Mm-hmm. We done. So you think the internet could possibly save us from that? Yeah. We don't understand? Because you got, you had a lot of power in, in independence now. Well, I agree with you, man. I, I, I agree with that point. So guys. Do you think the man is dumbing down hip hop? Or do you think the internet can save us? Leave your comments down below, man. Uh, tell us what you guys think. Uh, we'll have some links down there for you. Some videos from KRS-One, Lord Jamar, even talking about the Illuminati. Uh, thank you guys for watching, man. Man, who the hell are you talking to? I'm talking to the, to, to the people out there. How long you been in this tent, though? About a year and a half. I'm getting the hell out of here.